say combating of uh, expansion of deserts mm -hmm. or uh, combating ex uh, desertification that uh, might might have been brought by this issue of climate change Consu uh, maybe afforestation and uh, reforestation of uh, of uh, those those rangelands that have been um, affected or the forests that have been affected uh, control of uh, development uh, human development into some of the protected habitats within the county um, uh, protection of uh, of and conservation of wildlife uh, conservation of uh, uh, of uh, some of the natural of of course abstraction of a sustainable abstraction of uh, some of the natural resources including even water uh, and and uh, and even uh, oil if it is available within the county and even even the minerals that are there yes so uh, may maybe it's part of the one of the other things that might we might need to think about as a strategy is uh, the issues, of course, uh, pertaining the capacity of, of stakeholders within the county, the, uh, st the actors within the, uh, the natural environment and the physical environment, uh, and that includes the communities. So there is an essence of capacity building of these, uh, these communities. These communities, we also need to uh, do some capacity building on issues of uh, environmental uh, management and uh, and uh, and, rehab and uh, safeguarding and then number two we also need to do uh, as a strategy and we also need to do uh, uh, trainings on this climate change mitigation and adaptation I think the public procurement uh, act outlines some methods of, uh, of procurement that we, are, we can, we can, uh, we can in, in, uh, involve or we can use when uh, procuring within the county. And uh, this is not necessarily for only counties, but even for, the, for other entities and uh, for even for the national, uh, gov including the national government. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the methods is a request for quotations. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we can request for quotations mm -hmm. as a method of uh, procurement. The other one is a request for proposals, and that is uh, particularly so for consultants. Uh, the other one is um, we can have open tenders, mm -hmm. open tendering uh, processes. We can have uh, uh, closed tendering processes. We can also have a, a, a mix of uh, the two, which is a two-stage kind of uh, process. Uh, tendering, uh, kind of tendering process. We can have, we can also do, uh, sometimes we can do uh, direct procurement. We can just procure directly from, uh, from, from, enti from, from uh, entities. Um, we can also compare on costings, such that uh, the person we pro procure from has to be someone who has provided a <coughs> list cost. So we can have a list cost kind of procurement. And uh, even during uh, the process of uh, awarding and, and contracting, there's a process normally of uh, negotiation that we will require to, I think that is one of the methods of, uh, of what that is uh, needed for, for procurement. So that is competitive negotiation. Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Peter. The, the day that the submission is on October 21st of every year. October 21st of every year. Thank you, Julia. Uh, I think the one of the I will mention two roles that the county committee can play, the, the committee can play, the committee on environment can play. One of them, of course, uh, with regard to projects is that uh, they'll have an oversight role over the implementation of uh, these projects or, uh, or this, the, the programs that uh, the county will be implementing. And then uh, the other one will be, they'll also play a, a very critical role uh, during 
say uh, the budgeting process uh, in uh, say <coughs> coming up with the when coming up with the budgets of this particular docket or this particular area of uh, of environment because they have to scrutinize that that budget and uh, mm. see whether it is uh, it is fit uh, for for the implementation of uh, activities within the department thank you okay thank you uh, back to my right uh, thank you chair Thank you, Mr. Chimon. For your, um, mm -hmm. I try to look at this section 68. I try to remember section 68 of the, of the Act. I think it addresses uh, accounting. Uh, I think the section, uh, but nonetheless, accounting, accounting responsibility as an accounting officer, uh, one of my key roles, of course, is to ensure that um, there is prudent and uh, lawful use of, uh, of resources within the, the, the department. Uh, secondly, um, would be to, to look at uh, the county plans the county plans and try to develop uh, a strategic plan within, that, within my department that would, uh, would outline what kind of uh, projects we are going to implement. Uh, and um, thirdly, I think um, my role would be to develop some budgeted investments uh, in line with the plan, in line with the strategic plan that, uh, that has been that have been that have developed. And then, um, the other, the other thing, of course, is to make the assets mm -hmm. uh, within that, within that, uh, within that, uh, within that department. Um, the other one also would include um, uh, looking at the award documents, awarding of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, contracts, and making sure that those contracts are mm -hmm. as awarded are awarded to um, people with capacity. And also that they are implemented. Those, those, that those programs are, are also implemented as a requirement. Um, the other, the other bit also. There, are, there are so many. Uh, the other bit would be to look at um, the records. Uh, what, what are the accounting records are available within that department, and try to ensure that those records are well kept and they are kept in a way that it can be accessible. And they are well protected. Uh, the other issue is um, on the records. Is that um, the records ought to be compliant with the with the with the plan for the act. Thank you. I, I think, uh, Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Chairman. Those parts of Parliament have been approved or have not. This is a real issue beyond uh, the paperwork that we discuss. And it's beyond academic. Yes. When you meet high to high with the ordinary of those areas, now you speak of conservation versus uh, the land question, it's, it's a big thing, really. And it will come to your desk. So I think we want to move away from that. Uh, and then uh, I want to welcome Honorable uh, My Look to take us on the next question. We are almost at the tail end of our session, and the time has really moved. So, Karibu, I think. No, no, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, You talk of Panaro and you talk of like a you talk of the and also the title of AMS and that's game reserve is more so of a is a is a evolved unit. So um game uh, AWS usually work on national industry because the duty of the country government 
to ensure that the game itself is, uh, is in good condition. And um, I don't know how are you going to involve the trade ideas on this issue that is mostly the work of country government. And um, I, I think I'll start with the first question, which was actually in passing. Uh, I think the resource, the natural resource, which is uh, uh, and the, the, the county government is in charge of managing the other resources that, so that we can reach to the root cause of, uh, of, uh, of this. Uh, of, of that. So, secondly, on your uh, second question, um, the last time um, I checked, I think it was around 12%, but uh, not really very sure. But not very sure. Yes. Okay, uh, Chair, thank you, thank you, uh, Silas. Another question that uh, I want to ask you is that uh, what uh, communication strategies are you going to apply if you will be nominated to this position so that you ensure that uh, uh, the department works well? Thank you. Thank you, Mashimo. Um, and to the chair, uh, when you are nominated, of course, when I'm nominated as, as, uh, as a chief of the Department of Environment and Climate Change, so it is to be very key that I communicate to my, my staff, the team that we have. And uh, one of the key strategies, of course, uh, would be to have meetings with those people, with the, with the staff there. So we need to have like one on one conversations with the uh, members so that you can understand how they, they carry out their activities, what challenges are there, and uh, how they can, how we can find solutions to those challenges. Uh, secondly, uh, of course, while encouraging that kind of uh, conversation between, between these members, it would be also key that that conversation becomes open, that I have a one-on-one -on -one conversation that is open. The questions to models then bring us Questions that, are, that is to the members of the public. Uh, maybe a quick question, one or two, and then we will be closing the session. And I think the okay, honor of okay, honorable you, member. Thank you, Mr. Sainz. Well, when you're getting me, we learn that. Come on, Craig. What does it entail? Thank you very much, Honorable Michelle. Um, I thank you, and that is a very valid question, particularly for us here in Baringa, uh, and particularly for us in, uh, in the other countries. Carbon that is that is emitted to the atmosphere. So there is a process of um, sequestration, or rather absorbing of this carbon from the atmosphere, so that you reduce the levels within the atmosphere. So carbon credits. Uh, are actually some kind of value that is that is uh, that has been attached to the amount of carbon that an entity like a county government or a national government can can uh, can uh, absorb can reduce from the atmosphere within a particular time or within a year or something like that or a month so within a period of time so carbon credits now is like a currency. So the, the more the amount of carbon, it has been attached a value, a dollar value. So that the, the more the amount of carbon that you, you, you extract from the atmosphere, the more the dollars that you earn. So one of the key things that I, I'm thinking, like even here in Baringo, we need to map our, our resources to see how much carbon credits we can absorb. Yes, Baringo County. And how, ma how can we benefit from this carbon credits market? Because we have forests, we have uh, wetlands, we have conservancies, we have water bodies, and all these are, uh, are sinks, are carbon sinks. And these carbon sinks need to be quantified, and uh, we need to ensure that uh, we earn as a county and as a department from uh, from the international markets on carbon credits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh
Thank you. I think there are there are bodies that uh, there are bodies that are uh, are uh, charged with a kind of appraising app appraisals, and uh, it is. Uh, I think I talked about uh, some some links to the national government. That is something that uh, we can follow up with the national government and see which which uh, which entities are there or which organisation are there that can appraise. Uh, any, any, any of us for carbon credit or can appraise that those carbon credits. We have department of uh, uh, Kenya. We have Kenya Wildlife Service. They they have uh, some accredited organisations, and uh, even the even the environment and natural resources have some accredited organisations. But they are available. Okay. Yes. Thank you, uh, Chair. Uh, on what Sial uh, was said. Silas, uh, I've seen uh, that you are, you are conversing with this uh, carbon credit and sequestration, and I'm happy that uh, uh, if you will be nominated to this position, you have said that you will work to ensure that the county of Baringo will benefit from, uh, from the, 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 um, the carbon credits that are, that are supposed to be paid for. And um, I'm hoping that what you have said here, that if you will be successful, you will ensure that Baringo County benefits from it. Because I've seen that uh, in counties like, for example, Samburu and uh, Isholo, there are services that are benefiting from this. Yes. They are being paid a lot of money because of the vegetation cover. Yes. They are, uh, and uh, with our vegetation cover of Baringo that we have currently, it's very high, about 27%. I'm sure that it has uh, poses threats to us and also at some point our weakness. Right? Where do you think, uh, where do you see by you in the next five years? Because that's a period we'll be serving here. Where do you see by you in the next five years? What are some of the opportunities that we need to amplify as by you people? And what are some of the habits that we think we need to suppress so that we can achieve uh, more as a cultural growth diversity? Yeah, thanks. Uh, that's uh, thanks, much. I think that is a very good question. It is, uh, it's, it's something that is so wide that we need to address in the conversation. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, what we can do, in this country, of diversity. We need to then think about leveraging the that are available. We have uh, so much resources within this county that we need to uh, to kind of uh, sustainably explore. We we need to also empower our communities so that they can be able to sustainably manage those kind of resources for for their prosperity and to support their livelihoods within those communities. We need also to ensure that uh, we have a cross uh, links in the, in the relationship with other departments and uh, other state organs so that um, we, 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 we take advantage of the opportunities that those uh, organs uh, bring to us. So there is a lot that we can do. And uh, with that, I see um, we, if we can do this, we can do that kind of linkages and engagement within those uh, communities. Um, I'm pretty sure that some of the things that we have discussed, including even the carbon credits by Honorable Sialo and Honorable Mainuk, is something that uh, can come into fruition within the next few years, not even five years. We can be able to uh, harness that th that opportunity of uh, of getting cash or getting money or resources from from natural resources. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I want to take this opportunity to really thank the committee, this Honorable Committee, for having me today. I think uh, I don't take it for granted that uh, I've been appointed to this uh, very important position, very vital position, to also play my part and to support each other uh, with you as we uh, work on the development agenda of our county. I think um, 
Um, I also want to um, say uh, to this committee and to tell the committee that the opportunities also within climate change, the opportunities around environment are enormous. And I'm looking forward to working with you, uh, if, if, uh, if uh, approved, so that uh, we look at the, those opportunities and see how we are going to work together to move our country forward and to ensure that as much as development <coughs> happens uh, within this county, it is up happening within an environment that is sustainable, that is, uh, that is uh, productive, that, can, that has potential for all of us in, in the near future, for, for this generation and the generations beyond. So I really want to thank you and uh, appreciate for the time that I've had with you. I know there are many opportunities, uh, of course, that we have not tight, uh, including some of the components around, uh, around cleanliness and all these things. And uh, within this town, uh, maybe and some, uh, some of our towns, uh, up upcoming towns, and those are opportunities that I think with the, with the engagements that we are coming, we are, will be having, we'll be thinking about how to manage some of the environmental hazards that are within uh, our, our environment, like even in this county, uh, even in the county headquarters. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Sailors. Thank you. Uh,